Hey everybody, Mike here. So in this video, we're going to show you how we pour a small interior concrete floor right over an existing concrete floor. So this floor is about 30 by 19 total. There was an existing old concrete floor there. The homeowner bought the house, they're remodeling it, and they wanted to add radiant heat to this spot. So the best way to do that really is just the way he did it here is he he put down some styrofoam over the existing concrete floor and stapled his radiant heat right to that. And in this instance, he had plenty of room to add a, a four inch concrete floor, which is what we're doing here. Now we, we could have gone three inches on this or you know we could have gone six inches really. It all depends what you have for room, but that's what we went four inches here because that's the height he wanted to come at with four inches. So it worked out really good for this floor. Now what we're doing is we're getting the concrete spread around. We, we're using about a 4,000 PSI concrete on this with fiber mesh reinforcement in it. Uh, we're pouring, you know, about a six slump. Our normal six slump, if you've seen me pour any other videos, we got water reducer in the concrete, so we, we're not using much water to get it up to this slump. Mostly water reducer in it. And the mix is, is pretty nice. It's, it's a pretty nice mix. It's not too rocky got a lot of good paste with it so it it sticks together pretty good and it it flows really good so you get to see us here pouring this sometimes a smaller interior floor like this is actually a little bit more work than a larger exterior one like a slab or something it's just you know we're going through a, a six foot door that's the only access we got to use a, a little chute with a saw hus here and move that around to get the concrete where we want it I mean, it's just a little bit, it's a little bit harder, it's not much harder for the three of us, but if you were thinking of doing something like this yourself, you know, you definitely want more than just yourself. You'd want at least one extra guy, if not two. For the three of us, I mean, it's just, this is stuff we do every day. It's really no big deal for us. Um, if, you, if you watch any of my other videos, I do come out with a couple other videos a week, so if you like concrete stuff, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe, you'll see us pouring all kinds of concrete stuff and if you like these kind of videos you know let me know down in the comments what you guys like me to, to post the most of and if you like seeing just small pours of us doing this with three men uh, let me know that too you can see how nice that stuff flows it's a you know when it's a 4000 it's got a lot of cement in it there's no filler there's no fly ash there's no slag in it or anything it's just all cement and you know a mix like this is going to dry really fast too it's still cool enough here in Maine where we're pouring this that they're using warm water in the concrete so the water is pretty warm it's about it's actually pretty hot still it's about 130 degrees and with the 4000 psi with all that cement in it it goes off pretty fast eventually this floor will will get a polished a stain and a polish um, but t you know today we're just gonna pour it get it power trialed nice and smooth put some sod expansion joints in it And then that's our part then the polishing will come you know down the road a couple months down the road probably now I'm shooting my wet pad in the middle the wet pad is what we use to screed off from You'll see us screeding the pad and then using that pad in the center along with the the edges that we mag floated around the outside and that's what Luke's doing over there we got a we actually got a chalk line a blue chalk line around that outside edge that we're magging our edges to now this is what happens when the concrete's too low in the middle <laughs> the guy screeding got to stop kick some in because there's no there's no rate guy there I'm I'm the rate guy <laughs> but I was making I was making another pad so I couldn't be in two places at once so the guys had to stop, fill it in. That's, you know, we're used to that with only three of us. We do what we can, but we try to help each other out as much as we can. But sometimes we're just busy doing something else. Now I'm over there raking. The guys are kick screeding. We call this kick screeding. So they keep moving. They don't stop. They keep that, that straight edge right on the back edge. They don't cut it with the front edge. And it glides right across the top over, over our wet pads. And this allows us to screed the floor just as simple as that. It's really a pretty simple process once you've done it a while. That's a 14-foot screed too. So, I mean, two guys on a 14-footer can, can screed a bay down pretty fast, especially with a good raker like myself. Uh, 
in there. Now you'll see how nice and smooth this stuff bowl floats without having to work it too hard. I've got that really nice tilt head, head on the bowl float from Superior Innovations too. You guys, you know, if you if you're looking to make your bowl floating easier, that's the head you want on the bowl float right there, that one from Superior. So I'll have a link for that down in the description. You guys can check it. Go to his website and check it out. Now Luke's finishing up the other little piece. There was about a five foot piece over here to get to the wall. He's finishing that up with a seven foot screed. The smaller screeds, you know, sometimes we'll kick them by ourselves like this. Or if we have a free hand, then, you know, we'll, another guy will just step on there with him and help him. Yeah, that's a good shot of just how easy that closes up. Usually once down and back and it's good, and then we can set over. When it closes up nice and tight like that, nice and smooth, that makes the finishing a lot easier also. Do you guys, let me know you guys at Pour Concrete, do you struggle bow floating, you know, and getting your surface closed up like that? Or is it is it pretty much just as easy as what we're doing right here? So that's the rest of the room. You can see we're going around a little fireplace there. We got some expansion board up against the the fireplace. We got styrofoam up against the outside perimeter, kind of to act as a thermal break so you don't lose any heat out the edges. So this room ought to heat really, really well when it's all done. A lot of the floors we pour here in Maine have radiant heat in them, whether it's new construction whether it's remodeling construction like this one, but a lot of people put radiant heat in the floors here. And from all the heating guys I've talked to, I talk to a lot of them because I ask a lot of questions. They like the heat tubes right on the bottom. They don't like it in the middle. They don't like it close to the top. They like it at the bottom of the slab. So that's why that's why they're stapled right to the styrofoam and they're not they're not picked up into the concrete at all. They want to heat from the bottom up. They want to heat that whole slab of concrete, you know, because heat rises. So, I mean, that, they tell me it just works better that way. So now that we got most of that room poured out, we're going to finish magging our edges, getting our pads around the edges. Then we can screed this off. This was kind of small. A lot of pores, you know, will... We'll get out the power screed, the vibra screed, the battery screed, whatever you guys want to call it. And we'll screed with that. But this was just so small, the guys really didn't want to get it out. They just said, ah, let's just do this one by hand. Most of the time, I'll just let them decide what they want to do. <laughs> they do most of the screeding anyway, so. That's my new bull float method right there. How many of you guys have a method like that? <laughs> whatever works whatever it takes to get the job done that's how I feel I didn't want to put another handle on I'd already taken it off so call me lazy I guess you can see that's what we like that's what we like for a surface when we bull float nice and smooth if we can get it nice and smooth like that, we can really let it firm up good before we put a power trial on it. We don't have to get on it early. Now there's two guys on a seven foot screen. <laughs> it's almost like dancing for them guys. They're in sync. Them guys have been screeding like that for over 20 years together. So they don't even, it's, I guess it's just like riding a bike. They could do it with their eyes closed. So I'm going to finish bow floating this up. Again, if you want to learn more about concrete uh, training, I have the Concrete Underground, my private training. The link for that is down below. You can check that out. Um, bow floating, again, the easiest, the best tilt head for the bow float is that one we got on there. You can check that out down below. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.